On the breakfast, United Nations say nearly 1 billion people worldwide suffer from some form of mental disorder. We'll be speaking with an expert. Also on the breakfast, the Oyo State House of Assembly approved the appointment of Adebay Olawal as a new deputy governor following the impeachment of Raouf Olayin. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's papers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. I hope you're having a great day already. And if you're in Lagos, I hope you're finding your way, you know, trying to get to work or you're already settled. As always, we start our conversation with Top Trending. And today promises to be an amazing time. Former Top Trending conversation, you know, to the main conversation, looking at the, uh, the papers this morning. But first, it's on a very sad note. And second would also be on a sad note, and that's because yesterday Nigerians were thrown into mourning as we lost one of Nollywood's finest. Really, really sad, very saddening. I mean, there are no words to describe it. Ada Ahmed died in Delta State. Now, um, she's a Nigerian actress, if you don't already know. Uh, she spent more than 20 years working in the film industry. And she's known for playing several roles in movies, including Anita in the 1996 film Domitila, and also in the Johnsons, where she played, you know, that very fantastic role. Now, despite being a native of Idoma in Benue State, Ame was born and she was raised in Ajegule in Lagos, of course, at the region of southern West Nigeria. And that's why, you know, there's a lot of, um, when she is in character, you know, she comes out with this comic uh, person. I mean, it's a lot of relief and it's always an excitement, you know, to watch her. She did her school schooling in uh, Lagos. Uh, she also dropped out of school when she was 14. Adame uh, made Nollywood debut in several films, including that of Ejiro, and that's what we talked about, the Domitila, where she uh, portrayed the character Anita. Now, and, uh, also, we talked about the Johnson already, where she's uh, an award-winning actress for that role that she played. She's done a couple of films, Our Husband, King of uh, Shita, Ghana Must Go, A Million Baby, My Village People, Among Others. Uh, but we quickly just, uh, you know, just before we take that track, let me also let you know that she had a failed surgery in Abuja in October 2020. The actress also lost her daughter. Now, Ada Ame has been going through a lot, and that's because recently she posted, you know, a video of her going through some mental illness and difficulties shortly after she lost her daughter, who was also described as her best friend and everything. Can you even imagine what she would be going through? Well, let's quickly uh, take a look at this, uh, you know, track where she talked about her mental state. It's taking my life. I'm not going to die. We'll get over it. We'll get over it. I was given a job. I didn't do the job because I had mental issues. Would people understand when you say you have mental issues? They won't. They are slamming me with a bill, suing me. It's okay. It's okay. And of course, uh, still on top trending, Nigeria also lost another actor. You know, it was also a very sad day for Nigerian Shola Onoiga. It was a seasoned Nollywood performer best known for her roles as uh, Irati. In Kitchen Practical, now, following her appearance in Kitchen Practical, she went on to star in other Nigerian television drama, including uh, Jamaji. Uh, that, that's a recent one. I'm sure you probably would have seen that one. Uh, she's played several roles as wives in the Nigerian sitcom Fuji House of Commotion. She, was, uh, she also created and led by, uh, that movie was created by Amaka Igwe. Now, the program ha was 
a rift on the checkmate soap opera from the 90s. I mean, if you remember that one, uh, that's, that's a familiar face right there. And although the actress was brought to the ICU session of Lagos State University Hospital uh, two weeks ago because, I mean, it was also said that she wasn't feeling too good, uh, no cause of death had yet been identified or made public. Uh, it, it's been a lot, uh, practically. But in all of this, this is what I would say. I know that we live in a culture where it's not very prominent uh, for us to celebrate those who are alive. Uh, usually, we always wait for people to be dead before, you know, we go out with all of the accolades. And I'd say to you, it's important for every time I have an opportunity, you know, to be at a birthday celebration. And I'm probably maybe, you know, coordinating the events maybe as a compare or um, I'm just uh, being made to, you know, make a comment or give a speech. I always say it's important that we take care of the living. It's important that we celebrate those who are alive. And in most times, I mean, uh, for, for cases of people, for instance, the cause of death of Adama has actually not been, you know, ascertained. It's not been, we can't really say what exactly happened. Because, you know, it was reported that she was somewhere having a great time in Delta State and she slumped. And of course she died, but you know what happens when someone slumps. Usually it's always attributed to maybe probably a heart attack or what have you. We're waiting for an autopsy report. Hopefully um, that's also been carried out and we understand what led to the death. But um, for people around us, it's important that we understand that, you know, life can be very fickle. As long as we go uh, about our businesses, we can very be busy. We can be so busy and gross with ourselves and our businesses. But let's not also forget to be kind to another human. You know, humanity is important in the course of our interaction with people. Let's deal with them, understanding that they are human. And always show kindness as much as you can. Their support system, the church is there. So if you belong to a church, you expect that, you know, support system would be there, the family, friends, and what of you, different organization. Let's just be there for one another. Uh, because you never can tell. And let's try to celebrate people and support them when they are alive and not necessarily say all of the beautiful things when they are dead. So as much as you can today, tell someone something nice. Let them know how much they mean to you or what they are to you uh, while they are alive and not when they are dead because they might not really be there, you know, to enjoy all of that. But that's it. We'll move away from that. Uh, the IGP uh, has ordered the probe into Portable's claim of founding one million Boys, now if you live in Lagos, you would understand prior to the time where you had the hashtag NSARS and uh, the pandemic, it was really, really, you know, dramatic. It was really a traumatic situation. A lot of persons had gone through so much. We take a, you know, we take that track down and when we return, we talk more. <laughs> Unfortunately, we apologize for not bringing you the translation um, of what he said for those who do not understand the Yoruba dialect. Apparently, he's saying that uh, he's a founder of, you know, one million boys. If you know the one million boys, in Lagos, and that's why I'm saying that if you live in Lagos State and you would, some parts of Lagos at the time where the COVID was, um, you know, on top of the front burner and people were restricted, you know, movements were restricted, we had all of the lockdown. It, it was a time where you had these boys terrorizing different parts of Lagos. I mean, it was a serious terror. People, marriages crashed, a lot happened, you know, people lost their life because this group of persons made sure that they robbed, you know, very well, the raped people, they did all sorts of atrocity. And if you have someone who's come out to claim that he is or, uh, you know, he's responsible for all of that or he's, he founded this group, then I think it's an opportunity for the police to swing into action because justice must be meted. And it's important, it's a good thing that, you know, the Inspector General of Police has also asked that there be an investigation to all of that. Away uh, you also find a bandit honored with chieftaincy title. It's another one. And it, it just brings us back to the conversation where we say, how has the government responded, you know, to the issue of insecurity in Nigeria? As much as you say that this administration has been 
uh, you know, big on security that came on the promise and, you know, came with a plan that, you know, security, uh, the economy and corruption would be their focus. But really, how do you explain for uh, a person who's been on a wanted list? I mean, he's been, I don't know, <laughs> can we, how far can we be? How far can we fare as a country? But that's what it is. That's what you have. Those who have been declared wanted by the security agencies for committing all of this crime. And, and it brings us back to the conversation of why is it that because the people who commit this crime don't, didn't fall from the sky. That's number one. They are not spirits. They are human beings. They are levators. They are Nigerians. Most of them have been confirmed as Nigerians. But what are we doing, especially when, you know, the power and what it takes to ensure that lives and properties are protected has been conferred on government. It's government's responsibility. I mean, it is, it's natural. It's natural of every government to ensure that lives and properties are protected. And that's why a government exists. But what do you find? You rather find uh, those who have been accused or those who have been found wanted, been celebrated, exalted. They're, they're having... Uh, you know, they're being conferred with titles and they're being honored. They're, they're now part of the society and they're moving like nothing really happened. We, we can continue like this and expect a different result if we say we want to tackle uh, insecurity in our country. But that's the size of our top trending this morning. We take a break. When we return, it will be time for us to look at the front pages of the National Dailies as we have Chris Kane de Wandu, who is of the African Governance and Leadership Initiative, the Executive Director. Stay with us.